yeah, really wanted to, to invite you here today to discuss mentoring. You know, it's a big passion of mine as well. Um, I, I think if I recall correctly that you had written 75 books by your 75th birthday. Correct. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I saw that, uh, I think it was your research that had proved what I personally suspected was that mentoring has positively impacted organizations in terms of retention, recruitment, succession planning, as well as communication between silos, et cetera. So yeah, what have you found to, to be the reason why mentoring is so beneficial? Well, but mentoring has been around for a very long time. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the concept of, of, of a mentor goes back to, uh, to, to the, the Odyssey. So 3,000 years or more. Um, and uh, modern mentoring um, uh, comes to, to us through the, uh, the court of King Louis XIV, um, a cleric called Fenelon, who continued okay. the story um, of, uh, of, of um, Athena, the goddess of wisdom, um, having conversations with people to help them think things through. So it's all about wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, we, we, we've got a, a wisdom deficit in the world right now. Okay. Uh, we can see them around around us. People make, making stupid decisions. Um, people, um, conspiracy theories, you, you name it. There's a deficit of wisdom. Um, yeah. And, and mentoring is all about helping people to reflect and, and become wiser. Um, okay. So we can see the benefits of that for individuals, <clears throat> for uh, for organizations, um, and for society as well. Um, a massive improvement. Once people begin to to think and reflect um, in, in a structured way, then we get all sorts of positive benefits. Um, uh, and, um, you yeah, know, what, what does a mentor do? A mentor is a sounding board. They, they, they help you to think things through. And they challenge your, 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 your thinking. Um, they, 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 in schools, mentors are, are, are um, you can, you see a lot of benefits from the reduction of bullying, for example. Um, reduction of expulsion. Salespeople. Uh, no, number of pieces of research um, in their first year show 20 on average 20 percent more than people who are not mentored um <clears throat> returning mums um we find that um uh, although in the states people tend to be back at work before they before they've even done the change the first nappy um the um it, it, in many countries you have a year or more of, of, of maternity leave coming yeah. back to work is hard um but mentoring actually helps to, to that, that transition people are more likely to come back and they are more likely to fit in and get hit the ground running uh, when they do return to the organisation. Mm -hmm. uh, if you give any, I'll give you an example of my own my own experience. When I was a young manager working for, I'm sorry, a young a young journalist then working for McGraw Hill, um, I was taken aside by my mentor who said, um, "David, just go and look at the managers in this company." Uh, and he didn't tell me any more than that. So I did. Then he said, well, what do you see? He said, and I said, I don't see anybody who's got hair down to their shoulders. He said, yeah, so there's a piece of information for you. You do with it what you like. So I got a haircut and I got promoted. Um, and and I, you know, <laughs> this, it's this, this, this ability of the mentor to help you see what's in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, as well. I, I know you mentioned the piece of wisdom. Um, and it's very, um, I would say, very trendy now. And also, I think, beneficial, the reverse mentoring. So you don't yeah. necessarily need to be the oldest to be the wisest, I would say. So how have you found, you know, let's say more junior individuals, 18 to 25 year olds doing reverse mentoring? Are they capable, just as capable as more senior individuals? Absolutely. Um, and in fact, we, we, we've got a whole program. We are, try we are aiming to get 5 million school age mentors. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, so uh, if kids can get to learn the skills of being a mentor um, at an early age, when they come into the workplace, they don't have to, um, to you know, they don't have to relearn it. They've got it already. Yeah. And organizations, by the time people get to be their first manager, they've probably be, learned a lot of behaviors from a bad, from a bad manager themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know how to mentor. They take command and control and, and so forth. If you've, if you've already got the skills of being a mentor, you come into the workplace with them. And, and, it, and it's so powerful. But Reverse mentoring is something that's evolving. Um, we've seen uh, it, it started off um, looking at the way that, that uh, linking junior and senior people and you, the junior person being more computer literate would actually help the senior person to um, be able to find, um, you know, work with Mike, work with, with, with uh, all, all the gimmickry on, on PowerPoint or whatever. <clears throat> but it evolved from that dramatically. Um, and it's much more now used as a vehicle for educating 
very senior people in the organization for, to look at the world through the perspective and the eyes of a different gender, a different generation, um, a different cultural background. Mm -hmm. uh, um, <clears throat> but even so, we've, we've developed beyond that as well. So reciprocal mentoring now is much more about changing the systems inside an organization. So if you think about reverse mentoring, <clears throat> the the a more senior person gets a, a deeper understanding of, um, of, of of the way other people think and different perspectives and their own privilege, um, and they're able to use that in their own immediate area. Um, the more junior person gets an insight into the politics of the organization and how to manage a career, how to work the system basically to manage their own career. But that just affects a few people. And in fact, you could say that it, it actually um, reinforces a lot of the barriers to advancement for people from black and minority ethnic backgrounds. Um, because they can, everybody can say, well, look, he or she um, uh, got through the system and they've been successful. And so what reciprocal mentoring now does is to say mentor or mentee, well, you're both mentors to each other. You come together and, 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 and all of the other things we've talked about are there, but you have additionally the responsibility to identify the barriers to advancement, for example, for people of color. And then, okay, so we bring together mentors and mentees, a whole group of them, and say, how can we address that system? And this is the leading edge of mentoring right now. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's very powerful. Yeah, what do you think that mentors should think about um, when before becoming a mentor? Um, it may seem easy from the outside, um, but what do you think they should be prepared for? Well, we, one of the things that's been fascinating is looking at the uh, at, at companies that which have um, introduced a mentoring program um, and just said, told people, right, go away and mentor. Um, and the failure rate is extremely high. Um, we, 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 esti we, we estimate that um, um, if you don't, don't educate people, um, only about a third of relationships really deliver any value. And they keep slipping into sponsorship, which is nothing to do with mentoring. The two, sponsorship and being a mentor, uh, sponsorship is about, about taking charge of your career for you. Being a mentor is helping you to grow and to develop and become the person that you can become. Um, and so the mentor needs to understand the limits of the role um, and, 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 and to get some skills and a toolkit around it. Um, and so it's important that both mentors and mentees, because they've got to take responsibility for managing the relationship, um, have appropriate training. So if you don't train anybody, the maximum that we've seen in any organization is that 30% of the relationships deliver any significant value. If you train just the mentors, you double that. If you train mentors and mentees, and then you educate the line managers, you push that up in almost all cases that we've been able to see to over 95%. Okay, those are some pretty impressive numbers. And yeah, yeah I think that at least from what I've seen from organizations that um, the mentoring program seems like a great initiative, but the amount of work, uh, maybe they've underestimated the amount of work that actually needs to go into it and the amount of full-time employees that need to be supporting it etc. So I guess you've probably seen something similar that, um, yeah, they just underestimate the amount of work that needs to go in it. If you want to have, you know, 500 people from an organization, that's a tremendous amount of people. Yeah. But there are lots of ways of actually making that, that, that burden a lot um, easier. So if you take, if you, if you take graduates, for example, in, into an organization, what's the best way for a graduate to learn the organization and, and, and what's going on, help make them, uh, make them part, at least part-time, part of the steering group of the, the work group, that supports that, that, that uh, supports this. There, there are lots of mentoring platforms out there. Most of them are not very good um, uh, because they. And one of the reasons they're not because it's because they they're basically a matching process rather than a supporting process. Um, and there needs to be some system in place to, to support people um, in the mentoring relationships to check if everything's working. Um, because relationship, the relationship goes through clear phases, mm -hmm. uh, um, and you want to make sure those transitions are all happening. Um, one thing that happens a lot, for example, is what we call relationship droop. Um, and and that, that, but basically, that, that's when you, you've talked about all the easy things, and you, but you haven't got enough of a trusting relationship to get into the really important deep things. Mm -hmm. And so having the support network there can be, can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. you know, having a steering group, having, volu having volunteers, using your graduates and so forth, these are all ways that you can actually uh, quite radically um, improve the uh, uh, the, the, hot, the the impact of the mentoring program, but also the cost of it. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be incredibly expensive. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of confusion around mentorship, sponsorship, but also mentorship and coaching. 
what would you say are the difference between coaching and mentorship? Oh, well, coaching is much more recent. Coaching never, the word coach um, didn't appear until the mid 1800s. And then it was a joke. Um, it, 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 it was, um, uh, and it's um, all, all the way up to the mid 1980s, really. Um, coaching was seen as a highly direct, directive form of instruction. Okay. And, it's, and, and basically, coaching has become powerful by adopting a lot of the tools and techniques from mentoring. There's a lot of, of, um, of misunderstanding. Um, um, that, that, for example, the idea that mentoring is is, a, is directive. You're telling people and advising people. There's never been the case uh, mm -hmm. historically. Um, the the reality is both mentoring and coaching are there to help people achieve clarity. So if you help somebody in, understand their internal world uh, and what's going on there, their fears and their hopes, their aspirations, their strengths, their weaknesses, and so forth, and you help them to understand their outside world, you know, what are the opportunities that are out there? What's changing in in our sector? Um, who is who who's looking out for me and to, to 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 be able to achieve what I want to achieve? Mentoring and coaching they 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 bridge that gap. The conversation. Uh, that, cover, that that links your clarity internally and your clarity externally um and <clears throat> the only difference really between coaching and mentoring is that mentors are likely to empathize more with the situation you're in um, to be able to ask uh, more pointed questions um, mm -hmm. and to be able to give you more context um than a coach because they can they've been there they've seen that seen it and and, and, and experienced it um but there's an enormous difference between giving somebody context, which helps them with the quality of their thinking, and giving somebody advice, which is doing the thinking for them. Mm -hmm. And so and this clarity in mentoring programs, it, 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 once mentors get this idea uh, that actually they're there to create this clarity for people, so people can make their own choices and their own decisions, then the relationships just blossom. And what advice would you give to those who have never had a, a mentor and are looking for a mentorship relationship, them as, as the mentee? Um, what advice would you give them? Uh, the, well, the first thing is, is, is there a program uh, in your organization or the profession that you're part of? So, so many professions have have uh, have some a scheme somewhere. Um, one of my favorites that I'm involved with is one for aspiring HR directors. Um, and so we link uh, people who uh, hope to become an HR director in the next few years with very experienced HR directors. Um, and this program has going, been going for quite a few years now. We've had eight, uh, eight or nine cohorts. Um, pretty much every single person who of the aspiring HR directors has uh, managed to make that transition, uh, which is really powerful. Um, and uh, about, a, about a year ago, we did a piece of research. We went out and asked mentors around the world. Sorry, we asked HR directors around the world. Simple question. Um, what is it that you know now that you become an HR director that you that you wish you'd known then? And we've been able to share this data, um, which which is which was very revealing uh, with both mentors and mentees. So it's thinking about the transition that you want to make. Mm -hmm. Who made that transition already? Yeah. Who do you admire and respect? Um, who will challenge you? And and perhaps the most important thing uh, in all of this is not to follow the instinct and find somebody who's like you mm -hmm. you're going to learn a lot more from somebody who's not like you well david i think that's great advice for anyone that is looking for a mentor and yeah thank you so much for sharing your your thoughts and insights on this topic it's been a pleasure Bye -bye.